This is not science fiction. This is a scientific fact. If you cut the spinal cord of an axolotl, a type of salamander, it does not become paralyzed. It grows a new one. If you crush its heart, it regrows a new one. If you remove 20% of its brain, it regrows a new one. For centuries, we have looked at this animal as a biological miracle, a what-if fantasy. But scientists have discovered the truth. It is not a miracle. It is a mechanism. The axolotl is using a set of genetic tools, tools that are not alien. They are ancient. And here is the salamander code hypothesis that is changing medicine forever. You have those exact same genes inside your body right now. They are just locked. This video is the story of how scientists are finding the key. It's the story of how within 100 years, the words permanent injury may become obsolete. For human beings, our biology is a one-way street, a car accident, a skiing injury, a single tragic moment and a 20-year-old spinal cord is severed. They will never walk again. A 50-year-old's liver fails. Their only hope is a transplant list, a desperate race against time, hoping for another's tragedy. A soldier returns home, but a part of them, a limb, does not. This is our reality, the permanence of injury. We as a species are masters of healing, but only up to a point. We are masters of patching. When we break a bone, the body doesn't regrow the bone. It creates a callus, a biological glue. When we get a deep cut, we don't regenerate perfect new skin. We create a scar. A scar is the symbol of human healing. It is fast, it is messy, and it is imperfect. It is a patch job, designed by evolution with one goal, survive. Stop the bleeding, seal the infection, and move on. A scar on your arm is an inconvenience. A scar on your heart tissue after a heart attack is deadly. A scar on your spinal cord is a life sentence. For a 100,000 years, we have accepted this trade-off. We heal fast, not perfectly. But why? Why did this seemingly inferior creature, the salamander, keep the perfect healing code while we, the dominant species on Earth, lost it? This is the great mystery, and that's where the hope begins. To find the lock, we first have to understand why it was installed. The answer is a fascinating evolutionary trade-off, speed versus perfection. Let's look at the two mechanisms side by side. Mechanism one, the salamander's way, perfection. When an axolotl loses a limb, a magical thing happens. The cells at the site of the wound de-differentiate. This means a skin cell, a muscle cell, and a nerve cell all forget what they are. They revert back to a pluripotent state, a blank slate stem cell. Together, they form a blastema, a small bud of pure potential. Then, this blastema, guided by ancient genetic signals, begins to rebuild the limb from scratch. It regrows the bone, then the muscle, then the nerves, then the skin, in perfect order. This process is flawless, but it is slow. It can take weeks or months. Mechanism two, the mammal's way, speed. Now, imagine our ancient mammal ancestor living in a hostile world. It gets attacked by a predator, a deep gash in its side. It does not have weeks, it has minutes. It cannot afford the slow, delicate process of building a blastema. It needs to seal the wound right now. So our immune system evolved to be hyper-aggressive the moment of injury, it triggers a massive inflammatory response and deploys fibroblasts, the cells that create scar tissue. This scar is a biological superglue. It stops the bleeding, it blocks infection, it saves our life. 
This is the scarring hypothesis. We didn't lose the genes for regeneration. We evolved a new, dominant, emergency healing system that overrides it. The scar is the lock. For scientists, this was the eureka moment. The problem isn't that we are missing the code. The problem is that we can't access it. The SCAR program runs so fast, the regeneration program never gets a chance to boot up. So the hypothesis became simple. What if we could pause the SCAR just for a moment and give the salamander code a chance to run? This is not a what-if question. This is the single most active field in regenerative biology, and the findings are moving from theory to reality. If you believe in the power of science to heal and the hope for a future without permanent injury, please consider subscribing to our channel. We are documenting the next great leap for humanity. Now, let's look at the keys scientists are forging today. This 5,000-word hypothesis rests on three breakthroughs that are happening in parallel. Breakthrough 1 the anti-SCAR technology, the key. The first step is to stop the lock from engaging. Scientists at dozens of labs are now developing hydrogels and protein therapies. Imagine a gel that you can apply to a severe wound, even a spinal cord injury, immediately after it happens. This gel is laced with proteins that do one specific thing. They calm the hyper-aggressive immune response. They tell the fibroblasts, stand down, don't build a scar here. By pausing this scar formation, we are for the first time creating a window of opportunity. We are opening a space for a new set of instructions. Breakthrough two, cellular reprogramming, the code. We have the window, but we still need the workers. This is where the Nobel Prize winning work of Shinya Yamanaka comes in. He discovered Yamanaka factors, four specific genes that can take any adult cell, like a skin cell, and reprogram it, wind it back in time, until it becomes a perfect, blank slate, pluripotent stem cell, the exact same kind of cell found in a salamander's blastema. This is the salamander code made manifest. We can now, hypothetically, take a simple skin cell from a paralyzed patient, reprogram it into a stem cell, and re-inject it into their spinal cord. We are no longer just pausing the scar. We are delivering the regeneration bud, the blastema, directly to the site of the injury. This is already being tested in humans for conditions like Parkinson's and macular degeneration, blindness. Breakthrough three, the salamander's voice the instructions. This is the final 100-year step. We've paused the scar. We've added the stem cells. Now, what do we tell them to do? If you just inject a blob of stem cells, you get a teratoma, a cancerous blob of teeth and hair. It's disorganized. The cells need instructions. They need the salamander's voice. Scientists are now meticulously mapping the exact sequence of genetic signals the axolotl uses. Signal one, become a neuron. Signal two, grow south towards the hip. Signal three, connect to that muscle. Within the next 100 years, the cure for paralysis could look like this. A surgeon removes the scar tissue from the severed spinal cord. They apply the anti-scar hydrogel. They inject a matrix of the patient's own reprogrammed stem cells. This matrix is preloaded with the salamander's voice, the precise chemical and genetic signals in the precise order that tell those cells, you are not a blob, you are a spinal cord. Build. This is no longer magic. This is not a miracle. This is biological engineering. This is the salamander code, unlocked. What does this world look like? What does this hypothesis mean for us? It means the end of a tyranny. Vision one, the end of the waiting list. 
Imagine a world where organ failure is no longer a death sentence. Today, 17 people die every single day waiting for an organ transplant. In this new world, there is no waiting list. Your liver is failing, a doctor takes a pinprick of your own skin cells, spends six weeks reprogramming and growing them in a lab, and then transplants your own new perfect liver back into you. A liver that your body cannot reject because it is you. Vision 2. The end of paralysis. Think back to that 20-year-old with the spinal cord injury. In this new world, the word paralysis is no longer permanent. It is a treatable condition. The injury is not the end of their story, it is the beginning of their recovery. The procedure is complex, the physical therapy is long, but it works. A year later, they take their first step. This is a world where millions of people currently confined to wheelchairs are given their lives back. Vision 3, the human check engine light. This technology extends beyond injury. It becomes restoration. Imagine a 70-year-old whose heart has been weakened by time. Instead of a massive, invasive surgery, they receive a simple injection of cardiac progenitor cells, stem cells programmed to become healthy heart tissue. These cells seek out the scarred, dysfunctional parts of the heart and replace them. The heart is not patched, it is regenerated. This is the world that the Salamander Code promises, a world where a burned victim regrows perfect, unblemished skin, a world where a diabetic's pancreas can be reseeded with new, healthy, insulin-producing cells, a world where a soldier who lost a limb in service to their country can, one day, regrow it. This is the ultimate positive future, not just because of the science, but because of the hope. It is the ultimate expression of humanity's drive to not just survive, but to thrive, to heal, to make whole again. The salamander, this small, unassuming creature, has been holding a secret for us, a gift. It has been the quiet custodian of a genetic code that we, in our rush to survive, had to lock away. We are not playing God by unlocking this code. We are simply remembering. We are remembering a biological inheritance that was always ours. The journey is long, the science is complex, but the hypothesis is sound. Within our lifetime, or that of our children, we will see the first human being to regrow a severed spinal cord. We will see the end of the organ transplant list. We will see the dawn of an era where the human body is no longer a prison of permanence, but a testament to renewal. The Salamander Code is not just about regenerating limbs, it is about regenerating hope. This regenerative future is coming. When this technology arrives, what is the first permanent condition you hope humanity will cure? Paralysis? Heart disease? Lost limbs? Leave your hope in the comments section below.